Hello viewers, Diwali is just round the corner and this time of the month we all get busy with shopping, home decorations and preparation of Diwali treats. I'm sure you guys need some time to recuperate from this pre-festive fatigue and what's better than enjoying these last few hours of your precious weekend with me Priya on your favourite show Z Connect. If you spent countless hours watching ZTV in the early 90s, then you would have surely watched this iconic game show Saap Siri. We got a chance to meet the face of this show, Mohan Kapoor, the man who worked up his career ladder from this show to Bollywood in style. Let's see what he's up to these days. Welcome to Z Connect, Mohan. Thank you so much, Priya. My pleasure. I think you're like a, generally a very happy and positive and a bubbly yeah, person yeah, yeah. and a very cheerful person. You've done so much work over the years. Tell me, if you wanted to just very quickly summarize your journey from Saab Siri days until now, how would you do that? Hmm. Do we have time? <laughs> uh, well, um, actually, it all started uh, in 1980. I was in advertising, I was in the marketing division and uh, one of my clients, a uh, confectionery brand, they were launching a new chocolate variant and I was servicing the account but the creative team, they presented them a script for the launch of that chocolate and the kind of character that was required for that chocolate brand, I don't know, for some reason the client said, hey, let's cast Mohan for this. So they said, yeah, great idea and also they came in to me, hey, you're going to uh, be the model for this. I said, me? Model? I said, oh, okay. So we did it. Now, because I was servicing the account, I had privy to the research data. And the research showed that nobody remembered the brand, but they all remembered his performance and his expression. So somehow that thing kind of got a lot of traction. And then I got calls from some theater directors. So I did theater, you know, in the evenings, aside from my um, um, day job of advertising. And from there, then I left an agency, I joined another agency. That agency, the MD, was partnering with another gentleman and they were coming up with India's first private satellite channel, ZTV. And um, so one of the uh, creative directors from my earlier ad agency, he came to meet my MD because my MD was in charge of all the creative work. He sees me there, the creative director, and he said, what are you doing here? I said, I work here, what are you doing here? He said, I've come to meet your boss to uh, discuss concepts for your new ZTV. So he said, just wait, I've got to talk to you about something. So office hours finished, but I was hanging around waiting for him because he's a dear friend. He came out and he said, I've got a show, which turned out to be Saab CD. He's saying, it's a one take show. It's the first time in India there's going to be multi cameras, which is more than one camera. And he's saying that there's no script. And on action, we start rolling and on cut, the episode ends. So I said, oh, okay. He's saying, how's your Hindi? Said, oh, as good or as bad as anyone in Bombay. So he said, okay, let's give it a shot. So it began there and from that one modeling assignment to theater to Saab CD. Saab CD was the uh, milestone which kind of then opened up the vistas and the world and, and then just life continued and then a lot of TV and stuff like that. I was very picky about what I had to do so there was a lot of TV and then somewhere along the way I kind of got bored because coming from a background of communication advertising so I would always look for logic and you know a certain element of characterization, script. And, which I wasn't finding and I was just kind of trudging along and I said, what am I doing with my life? So I gave it up and I started working behind the camera. A producer friend of mine, he told me, he said, why don't you write? If you speak so well, I'm sure you can write so well. I said, hey, nah. But lo and behold, I wrote for ZTV, a crime, uh, a one-off episode. Those were the days when they used to have this show called Saturday Suspense. So we wrote a, I wrote a one episode story on that and uh, it did damn well. In fact, we got the Thriller of the Year award for that show. So then that kind of got me encouraged, I said, hey, maybe I can write. So I kind of took a break from acting and started writing, working behind the camera, working for production houses. And I worked with some big production houses on some big shows which we launched. Then the, the whole tide of, you know, characters and film scripts and all that in Hindi cinema and television also to a great extent, that changed. So I said, hey, this is a good time to come back to, you know, being an actor. And so once again, the restless me, I kind of gave up all that came back to acting and since then I've just been acting. And in all of these different things that you've done over your journey, is there been a particular favourite role like that of maybe being in advertising or an actor or a director, a producer, a writer, television? I don't know, you know actually, uh, 
people ask me, they saying, when did you know you would be an actor? I said, I still don't know I'm an actor. I said, because I've just gone with the flow. Yeah. I come from a family of academicians, you know, they're all very highly educated. They're physicists, doctors, engineers, and things. My dad himself was a chemical engineer. So being an actor was never even considered in our family, you know. So it's always, you got to have a job, you got to do something. And I, uh, me and my studies were like, yeah, I don't think so. That ain't going to happen. But it just so happened that since childhood, you know, I've been interested in theatre and things like that because in, I still remember in grade four I directed my first play, a play called Spartacus on the Greek uh, warrior. My acting, I said I've done radio, I've done television, I've done film. So why do I, why do I have to be focused on only one thing? I mean, imagine a banker. How straight jacketed would that be, <laughs> right? I mean, just going to work, doing your job, leaving, and every day it's the same thing. Here every day I get to play out a fantasy, you know, every day I'm a new character. Yeah. You know, every day I'm, today I'm in front of a mic, tomorrow in front of a live audience, next day I'm playing a character in a different look. You know, every day, it's such a wonderful life. Yeah. It is. It so is. I can't really say that uh, there's this one thing I really like. I liked all of them and there were, there were, you know, portions of which a lot of them had their sense of like, you know, the, probably the politics that go into certain areas of each, each, not just one, one, each of them. I'm just happy doing what I'm doing and by that, if I'm getting everything I'm getting, thank you God. So I love my life, I just really, and of course there have been, like I said, bad days, but you take it and say that, hey, you wake up tomorrow, there's another chance, you, you do it again. And you've also recently worked with uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe's superhero web series. How was that experience? Yeah, so that that was uh, truly, it was humbling. I'll first say it was humbling and God bless, I mean, I was a lot more fortunate than a lot of others, you know. Uh, I managed to keep head above water and even during COVID, I would get some assignments where you had to shoot from home. I have a manager in LA, so she sent me a script, another script, and she said that, uh, hey, test for this, it's really big, it was for the Marvel new web show, the new franchise. Lockdown had just started lifting, so I requested a friend because the cues that had to be given for me for the other actor was of a girl playing my daughter's part. So I called a lady friend of mine and I said, yeah, please come and help me with these cues and all that. So there was all that fear about her ah, coming in and traveling and all that, but she lived close by, so she came over. She gave me cues. Now, here's the thing, I don't like too many takes because it gets repetitive and all. And usually if I get what they say, now, if you know you've got the sur, it's that's it. So I did one take, we both saw it. And she said, I like it. I said, yeah, even I like it for a change. So she said, kare, just for safety. I said, what rubbish, yeah, what safety, nonsense. Chalo, pay Milna to hai, de do. So I sent it and uh, my manager loved it. She forwarded it to the casting director at Marvel. That lady, she loved it. And then she said, okay, now we'll forward it to the bosses and all that. And lo and behold, in literally 15 days, I was approved. And I didn't know this. Here's the thing that, you know, abroad, the way it works is that you first send a tape of yours. Then they call you, then the casting director, the team, they test you. Then you sit with the production or whoever the director, producers, whoever they are. I got that and October, I was uh, in the States, in Atlanta. and. We shot this new web series called Miss Marvel. The comic has been around for the longest time and it's a huge success. And it's all about a Pakistani immigrant family in New Jersey, living out a typical middle class life. Till the daughter, I'm the father, till my daughter realizes she has superpowers. And then as the story progresses, she turns out to be New Jersey's savior. Then she joins the Marvel universe and, yeah. and Marvel being the number one production house in the world, studio in the world, so yeah, it's completely at another level. So it's damn exciting, the journey has just begun, 2022 is going to be uh, busy and exciting too, so fingers crossed. Yes, yes. Fingers yes, crossed, crossed, eyeballs crossed. <laughs> fingers crossed. But nice, it's nice, it's nice knowing so much about you Mohan and it's been so wonderful talking to you, knowing your journey and it's really yeah. so inspiring, everything that you've told us about your life, everything, everything is so inspiring. Thank you so much, it's been a pleasure being here and chat with you. This Diwali, soothe your aching sweet tooth with our healthy dessert recipe that's lined up right after this short break.
Welcome back. Diwali is incomplete without delicious food and I feel there is no harm in indulging in these treats if you have healthier alternatives. Let's watch Chef Deepti take us through some of her festive favourites to ensure that you have a guilt-free Diwali. Hello guys and welcome to Pinch of Health. I'm your chef Deepti Pai. A very happy Diwali to those of you who are celebrating it. This festive season, I am back with a very sweet indulgence which is super healthy and easy. This dish is called Bulgar Firni with a very healthy twist. I mean, come on, what is a festive season without some sweet indulgence, right? So this recipe, we are only going to bring out some small alterations and make it healthy. So now let's get into the recipe. For this, I will be using about one cup of bargol. Now you have to wash this and soak it in about one cup of water for about five minutes. I have pre-soaked the bargol over here and I'll be using this for the recipe. On a pan, heat some water. Here I'm going to use about half a cup of water. Now bring this to a boil and then add about one cup of milk. So in this recipe, like I told you, since we are trying to make it healthy, I'm not using a full cream milk, but almond milk. So to this, I'm going to add about one cup of milk. Now that the milk has come to a boil, I'm going to add the pre-soaked bargol to this. Give it a quick stir. So I'm going to let this sit until it just starts boiling and then we are going to add some dried roses to this. Now that it has come to a boil, I'm going to add about 2 to 3 dried roses. This is going to give a very nice flavour to the whole recipe. And then mix it. So I can see that it's come to a boil. Let's check on it. Now I'm going to switch it off and I will remove the rose petals from this. And for an extra flavour, I'm going to add about 1 fourth teaspoon of cardamom powder. Once the heat is off, I'm going to add about 2 tablespoons of honey. and then give it a good stir and the dish is ready now let's get to serving it so i'm going to be placing it in a mud pot because that is going to give an extra taste as well as a complete festive season I'm going to garnish this with some roasted cashews and some rose petals. You can crush the roses or just place them as it is. The bulgur firni is ready. So I have served this bulgur firni in a mud pot to give it a very unique taste as well as a very festive presentation. Now let's move on to a very colourful drink. So like I told you, I'm going to make a very colourful and festive feeling drink which is called Grape Peach Nectar. Let's get into the process. So in the blender, first I'm going to add chopped peaches. And to this, I'm going to add about half a cup of water and blend it. So I have blended this to a very smooth texture and I'm going to transfer this into the serving glass. So in this, first add some ice cubes.
You can add any desired amount of the ice cubes. Here I've added about one cup. And to this, I'm going to add the blended peaches. So here I've poured the first layer and for the second layer that's going to be the grape juice. Let's just move this aside and get into it. So in the blender I'm going to add about one cup of grapes. And to this I'm going to add lemon juice from about half a lemon. And then the juice from the lemon. I'm going to keep the other half aside for garnishing. Now, let's blend this. So, I have blended this well and now I'm going to strain the juice. So, here I've strained out the juice. Let's discard this. So to the grapes, we added the lemon to balance out the sadness. Now if you like and want to make it little more sweet, you can add honey at this point. But I will only be using it for the garnish. And to this, I'm going to add the second layer which is the grape juice. I'm going to garnish this with some honey. and a slice of lemon. A very refreshing drink which is rich in vitamin C and K and fibrous which is also good for detoxifying after all that sweet indulgence a great peach nectar is ready. So this Diwali, go ahead and treat yourself to a very healthy indulgence like I have shown you here. I hope you have a good time with your loved ones. Wish you a happy and prosperous Diwali from all of us at Z Connect. Let's take a quick recap. For Bulgar Firni, Take 1 cup bulgur, soak it in 1 cup hot water for 5 minutes. Bring half cup water to boil, add 1 cup almond milk, pre-soaked bulgur, cook it for 5 minutes. Add 3 to 4 dried roses, bring to boil. Remove the roses, add 1 fourth teaspoon cardamom powder, switch off heat. Add 2 tablespoon honey, mix well. Transfer to serving bowl. Garnish with roasted cashews and roses. For grape peach nectar, add 2 diced peaches to a blender. Blend it. Transfer to a glass with ice. For second layer, add 1 cup grapes, lemon juice 1 tablespoon. Blend and strain it in a glass. Top it with honey. Garnish with a lemon wedge. Time for a quick short break but right after we are making a quick stopover at a new art venue in the city. Do join us back. Welcome back. Dubai is home to the most luxurious art galleries and has the repute of possessing an array of architectural marvels. And with the addition of the recent Zygo Art Gallery along with their newly announced project the Clothespin Tower, the city skyline will get its largest work of art. Let's find out more. <laughs> The 
welcome to our gallery and uh, the first gallery in Dubai. And uh, we spoke about the building, the building, the icon uh, building uh, come on the base to this uh, close pin uh, for Zygo art. And this is going to be the first big art in the world. This building, building who going to be 55 floor, uh, 170 meter high. Uh, 165,000 square meter plus 15,000 uh, uh, shopping center and under uh, another uh, 800 uh, parking place under the shopping center. This is what uh, our plan. Okay, the clothespin, it's an object that I uh, focus on in because it's, um, uh, it's a man and woman that complete each other. So uh, here, it's, uh, for me, it's a perfect man and woman, uh, especially in this one, uh, it's uh, the sc scarlet, scarlet uh, it's uh, also a symbol of infinity, forever. I wanted to show that men and women, when they are together, it's forever. Uh, it's a, it's 15,000 stones of Swarovski. Why I put a Swarovski here? Another idea that I put here, Swarovski have a um, cutting, you know, like a diamond, okay? And uh, uh, my sculpture, any sculpture, it's three dimension, yes? And when I put a Swarovski, it's shining, it's to show that the relationship, uh, it's shining and uh, lost. And the second reason is uh, to bring you work, because if you're not moving, okay, it's not shining. So you are a part of this sculpture, okay? It's a four uh, dimension, not three dimensions. It's four. It's like a kinetic art. When you move, it's a four dimension. enjoyed watching today's episode this is me priya and i'm going to see you next week until then keep pouring your love and feedback on our social media handles and lastly wish you all a very happy diwali may the warmth and splendor of this festival fill your life with happiness peace and prosperity take care